This is the Milk 5 Jupiter. On the surface, it looks like a regular mini ITX PC motherboard, but this is actually a single board computer, on par with devices like the Raspberry Pi. It's not as fast as a Raspberry Pi, it's more expensive, and it's definitely not as user friendly. So why exactly did I buy it? Well, the main reason is the architecture. If you're watching this video on a smartphone or tablet, you're most likely rocking an ARM processor. And if you're watching this video on a computer, you're most likely rocking an x86 processor from Intel or AMD. Although in recent times, ARM has also become more prevalent on the desktop. But instead of x86 or ARM, this computer is based on the RISC-V instruction set. RISC-V is generally closer to ARM than it is to x86, since ARM is also a RISC-based architecture. However, RISC-V and ARM are not the same, so a program written for one will not run on the other without first recompiling or using emulation. Now, this isn't my first time using RISC-V hardware. Last year, I looked at the Star 5 Vision 5 too, but I didn't do much with it. I also considered using the Vision 5 II in my Cyberdeck, but I was very restricted when it came to size and power consumption. Okay, but why even use RISC-V over ARM? Well, the main reason is that it's an open standard instruction set, meaning anyone can make a RISC-V chip without any licensing fees or permission. On the other hand, ARM is licensed and x86 is governed by a shared agreement between Intel and AMD. However, the reason I'm using a RISC-V board is just curiosity. It's always fun to test the limits of something and see if it can do things it wasn't designed for. In terms of specs, we're rocking an octa-core SpaceMIT K1 system on a chip clocked at 1.6 GHz, and this board is available with either 4, 8 or 16 GB of RAM. However, it's worth noting the 16 GB model comes with the SpaceMIT M1, which is clocked at 1.8 GHz. The SoC also has an Imagination BXE232 GPU, and the board is powered through either a 12 volt barrel jack or a 24 pin power connector. If you're based outside of China, you can buy this board unofficially through AliExpress or officially through A Race Tech. I originally ordered on AliExpress, but after waiting a week for it to be dispatched, the order was cancelled. Thankfully, I got a full refund, but it was still kind of annoying. The reason I didn't order from A Race Tech initially is because of the shipping prices. Of course, shipping will depend on where you live, but as a UK buyer, the shipping was almost as much as the board itself. It's also worth noting there are faster Risk V computers out there, like the Hi5 Premier P550, Milk 5 Pioneer, and the brand new Milk 5 Titan. Why didn't I get one of those boards? Easy, because I'm broke. Anyway, to get started, we need an operating system. Unlike ARM, there's no Windows or Mac OS support. I believe some boards can run FreeBSD, but RISC-V is very much Penguin territory. The Milk 5 Jupiter officially supports three distros, Bianbu, Ubuntu, and Fedora. I tried out all three of them, but stuck with Bianbu because it's the official OS. Bear in mind, Bianbu is based on Ubuntu. Now, the OS was where I ran into a problem. There are a few different boot mediums on this board. You have the onboard SPI, the micro SD card slot, an EMMC module, and an NVMe slot. Naturally, I wanted to boot from NVMe for the best performance, and because I'm a bit paranoid of SD cards clunking out on me. Flashing to an SD card is very simple. Just use DD or Bellina Etcher like you would with most other SBCs. So what about an SSD? You'll notice the board has a USB-C port, and that's used to flash an OS to an EMMC or NVMe drive using a tool called Titan Flasher. On paper, it should be easy to get an OS on the SSD, but whenever I tried it, I just kept getting errors like compare CRC fail. I don't want to bore you too much with the details, but I tried everything. Different images, different computers with different operating systems, different SSDs, 
different USB ports, different cables. I tried flashing it manually using Fastboot, which is part of the Android platform tools. And I even tried debugging over serial, but nothing worked. I honestly couldn't figure out what the problem was, and even if I did, it probably wouldn't be something I could fix myself. So for the time being, I gave up and just used the SD card. As a last resort, I decided to clone the contents of my SD card to the NVMe drive, and I managed to trick the system into using the NVMe's bootfs and rootfs. This was definitely an improvement over using the SD card on its own, but it's still a suboptimal solution. So what is the general computing experience like? Thanks to modern web bloat, web browsing is quite sluggish and you can't really watch YouTube on this thing. However, if for whatever reason you wish to daily drive this machine, using Sway and minimal applications instead of the full GNOME suite definitely helps. I'll have some examples for you on screen. One of the things I wanted to do with this board was get an external GPU working. Milk5 actually market this on their Jupyter page, but in practice, it's not as simple as just plugging in a GPU. You'll need to change the kernel and or make sure you have the required modules, change environment variables, and install the relevant dependencies for things like Mesa. I initially trialed this with my personal GPU, the RX 590. I got it working through a response on a Milk5 community forum so thank you to these two individuals. While I was able to get a display output with the 590, I was limited to soft pipe software rendering. So when I ran GLX gears, I was only getting around 20 FPS. So in practice, it was slower than just using the SOC's onboard GPU. Since older AMD GPUs use a different graphics stack, I figured I would have more success with one of those. I initially picked up a HD 6870, but the GPU was broken. I realised this since it didn't even work in a regular PC. So I returned the 6870 to the shop and bought a HD 5850 on eBay, since a guy called Opvolga got it working on his Milk 5 Jupiter using OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. I tried to replicate his setup for the best possible result. Unfortunately, I had no success. But his content has been a very useful resource, so a big thank you to him as well. I decided to try the 5850 in Bianbu, and I actually got it to work with hardware acceleration. However, it is very unstable. It really doesn't like my capture card, and it doesn't like booting. It's like trying to start an old car that's been sitting in a garage for way too long. Sometimes it works, Sometimes it doesn't. Now let's move on to gaming. On paper, a device like this really isn't designed for gaming, since not many games are native, flat packs don't work, and we also can't leverage Steam or Wine, but that's not going to stop me from trying. Before I started to mess around with external GPUs, I wanted to see if I could port a game to RISC-V Linux. The game I chose was Taisei Project, which I spoke about in a recent video, it's a FOSS bullet hell game inspired by Toho Project, and I chose it because A, unlike some of the more well-known FOSS games, there's no RISC-V port, at least not as far as I know, and B, it has some pretty detailed build instructions. The GitHub repo lists all the required dependencies. I had to compile SDL3 from source, but I was able to hunt down most of the others. I also compiled the game using some additional flags, such as using OpenGL ES rather than OpenGL, since the onboard GPU doesn't support it. So after all this work, does the game run? Almost. The game launches, the UI is very smooth, and the music plays, but when you go to actually play the game, there's an error. I haven't really looked into it, but I should hopefully get it working at some point. With the 5850 up and running, I decided to test some other games. Starting with Super Tux Kart, we sit at a comfortable 50-ish FPS at 1080p low. I was expecting it to run very poorly, so I was quite happy to see this, though as you can make out, there are some random graphical glitches. 
A similar level of performance can also be observed in Extreme Tux Racer, but without all the defects. Next, I tried Luanti slash Mindtest. This was actually suggested by another YouTuber called Living Linux, and it ran okay. It wasn't super smooth, but definitely playable at 1080p low. I hope at some point I can get Minecraft itself working, but if you really want a Minecraft-like experience, you can use a Minecraft texture pack. Next is Mestopia, which is an NES emulator. This runs fairly well. I then compiled Box64, which is a user space emulator for running x86 applications. I've used it a fair bit on ARM, but not RISC V. The first game I tested was Helltaker. This ran very well, no complaints here. I then tried Rigs of Rods, which is basically BeamNG Drive before BeamNG Drive was a thing. Initially, I wanted to compile it natively, but since I was feeling a bit lazy, I opted to just use Box64. It was completely unplayable, which I kind of expected, but given how niche this setup is, launching without crashing is already a miracle in my book. The same thing goes for Ultra Kill and a random indie game I found called Angerfoot. Finally, I tested Doom 3, but sadly it just crashes on launch. Now, I didn't just test video games, I also tested some creative applications like Kden Live and Blender. Blender didn't launch because the GPU is incompatible. Kden Live did launch, and I briefly considered editing this video on the Milk 5 Jupiter but sadly it was way too slow. Moral of the story, unless you're interested in RISC-V and have a lot of patience, this isn't a board you should buy. This is more of a tinkering video rather than a formal review, which is why I didn't focus on synthetic benchmarks. With that said, I hope you all enjoyed, and until next time, cheerio.